Hello everyone, in this lesson we are going to look at for each loop and also as I mentioned in the previous video, we will learn how to use scanner class to get input from the user. So stick around. Welcome back everybody. Now for each loop is a convenient type of for loop which enable you to traverse the array sequentially without using an index variable. The structure of this loop is something like this. Actually it's an example but I'm gonna explain the structure of for each loop here in this example. First of all as we said it is used with arrays. So first I created an array here by the name of lab and I assign four integer value in this array. Now here this structure is belongs to for each loop and you can see it's a little bit different from the simple for loop. First we have the for keyword in front of that in the brackets we have declared the variable of type int and after that we add this column and this column means for each element of j in the nums array. It means this j is gonna get each element of this num array one by one. And then here in the bracket we define what it have to do for each element of that array. And inside this bracket we simply say print out the elements of this array in front of this string which is this is. And since we loop through the elements of the array not through the index so we don't need to add this num here. We have to just write j the name of our variable through which we loop inside the num array. Now if I run this we'll get the result that we want. Now here we can assign the value of this array after running the program by the user rather than that we assign by ourselves. So for that we need a scanner class and here we have to define the slots of that array. So I say new int. For example, we want to give this array five slot. And now for prompting the user to assign a value, we have to import the scanner class from the Java util module or library. And for that we have to write import java.util.scanner. The thing you should know about classes is that you cannot directly use a class without creating its object. So first you need to create an object of this scanner class in the main class. Then you will be able to use that wherever you want in the main class. Don't be worried if you really don't get the point here because you haven't studied the class. When you have you studied the class you will get more familiar with these things classes and objects. So now I'm gonna create an object of this scanner class. So I say scanner for example enter equals to new scanner system dot n. Here we have created an object of the scanner class by the name of enter. Through this name we can get input from the user. Like so here I say num in the first slot I want to prompt the user to assign a number so I say enter dot next int and this will ask the user to assign a number in the slot 0 of this array. Let's run it once. There you go it asks for the input so I'm gonna type a number from the keyboard. Now you see here the number that we have entered is assigned in the first slot of the num array and the remaining slots are not being assigned so it automatically by default assigns 0 in the other slots. Here is something you have to keep in mind that we can access to each method of a class through its object by separating them with a dot and this is called dot operator. First we say the name of the object then we put a dot Like so, here we have different methods which are exist in this scanner class. So here are different things. For integer you have to type next int and for string if you want to prompt the user to add some string you have to write next line and if you want the user to write a byte number so you have to say byte like this and also if you want to prompt the user to enter a short number you have to say next short and like so for double and float also so this is the way how we can use this scanner class to prompt the user to add some input from the keyboard now in next example let's 
go further and I will create a for loop for prompting the user to assign all the numbers for assigning the value for all the slots of this array. So for that I say for INTI which starts from zero. And here we say repeat this for loop until the value of I get smaller than the length of this array. And here it have to increase the value of I by one. So now here since our array is from the type of INT so I prompted the user to assign an INT number. And also here I have to add an I because the I starts from the zero and will get the index of all the slots of our array. And here I'm just adding a tab to make our code a little bit beautiful. So now if I run this, there you go. It asks for an input. One, two, three, four, and five. And there you go, we get the result correctly. One, two, three, four, five. And also if you want to add a prompt message here, then you have to add a brace here. Because the statements of for loop is getting more than one line. If you don't add this brace, the for loop will take the second line as out of its scope. So simply we see here system dot out please enter a number I'm gonna rid of this free spaces now let's run there you go now we have a prompt message also for example I say 12 32 34 25 and also 26 and there you go we got the result and also if you want this number to be in front of this prompt message somebody you have to remove this ln in front of print method now if i run it again now we will be able to write the numbers in front of the prompt message for example 12 43 something again and again there you go so this was a quick tutorial on scanner class and also for each loop. Hope you enjoy and learn something. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and bell icon to get notified when I upload a new lesson. And don't forget to share the video with your friends. See you in the next lesson. Bye.